Iron Pipe of the Titan Metal Manufacturing Company. We make brass and solve production and sales problems by the use of brass. We're brass specialists. People like brass, you know, and they use a lot of it in a lot of different ways. Hey, local Astoria is back at Titan Hollow. Yeah, we're looking at the revitalization of Titan Energy Park. We sat down with former employees to learn the history from their experiences. And we visited Titan Hollow and Axeman Brewery to see how they're keeping history alive in new and creative ways. Hey, Angela. Hi, <laughs> welcome to the Hollow. Thank you. Thanks uh, for having us. Oh, please, my pleasure. All right. Would you like to take a look around? Yes, sure. thank you. Come on. So Angela, what brought you to Titan Hollow and what do you have going on here? I was the chief cider maker for Empire Cider and I brought some ciders down to a Pennsylvania football tailgate. And the tailgate, people whose tailgate it was happened to be the owners of this building and said, have you ever thought of going out on your own? I was looking at a place in the Finger Lakes, saw this factory and on that next Sunday, and then immediately pulled out of the deal in Finger Lakes and yeah. came down here. Exactly. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing that the amount of space, the height of the ceilings, the industrial feel of it all, um, the amazing generosity of our landlords to be able to remove equipment and reposition it and get it from different buildings while keeping the integrity of, yeah. of you know, Titan Energy. Yeah, so when you have a space like this, we, we want with black on the wall so everything else could just pop out. We have um, the panels from the boiler house that used to run all the boilers right across the bridge. They brought them over here to build our hostess station. They rewired the lights with our like Arduino board so that they have different dials for different things on. This was the controller for the boiler. Uh, we have the what I like to call the robot wall, which are the pilots for the boiler. So when they disassembled that the boiler house and brought them over to rebuild it behind the wall, I think I had the stokers above the furnace door, and all the guys came down and said. Nope, this is God. You gotta have the stokers on. I'm like, nobody will even know. They will know this. Put it the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> I, I was well satisfied with the whole time I worked here, quite frankly. I'll tell you one thing, it was a very important part of the war industry. They, we, they made uh, a lot of parts for bombs and whatever in this place. We made little round things and we forged them and what have you, and they were called time train rings for for bombs and made from different sized bombs for the war effort. 52, I got drafted. Then I went to service for two years and I come back and I got out in 54. I come back to, to the Titan and I got my same job back. I got a raise with, with the other people that didn't go. And after I come back, when I got out of service there in 54, I, I uh, waited two years to come back to work. But they gave me everything, you know, more than I wanted. So employees served from the company, and a lot of them came back to find their job waiting for them. Yeah. You know, this company, had every a lot of employees we talked to were like, yeah, you know, I served, and then I came back, and they said they held my job, and, you know, um, just a really veteran-friendly place. And then there was also guys that gave their lives um, in World War II, um, and I imagine other, other conflicts, but. And then this is the Army Navy E Award. Pretty amazing. E for excellence, like you said, one of its, like the top producing plant in the country. This place, from up there down through, we worked seven days a week, 24 hours a day, for a couple years during the war, just making fuse, right. fuse rings and timing devices, stuff for on artillery shells and bombs. And it was just continuous. We never stopped. The military gave out E awards. And there was a flagpole out here, a big pedestal made out of standing stone, had the E award. And a tractor trailer hit it after knocked it down. I don't, know where, I don't know where that ever ended up at that plaque. But if you go up into plan four, there's a lot of equipment up there that has 
the, serial, the asset numbers on it, property of the U.S. government. They provided the equipment that we needed to make their products. And then after the war was over, we inherited them. I would love to see when it had a high concentration of women running the plant yes. because yeah. the men were off to war. Yes, absolutely. So That's when knowing that our business is women yeah. centered, I would love to find those photos and, yeah. and put them up and preserve their part of the history too. Well, I'm glad I was a small part of the history of Ciro and uh, I'm I'm really uh, sad that it had to leave Belfont at all. It really was important to Belfont. Uh, I myself didn't have family here, but a lot of the families had uh, relatives down through the years uh, working here in different, uh, different areas. And it was a big part of Belfont's, of, of their life, of their life. But that's one nice thing about Ciro. Ciro was a place, family place. My father worked here. My uncles worked here, and it, it, it just felt it part of your life. So you follow your tradition. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this was family. My father worked here. My grandfather worked here. My uncle was here. I worked here. My brother was here. My cousin worked here. And a lot of at that time, that's what got you in here was family. Every, everybody you encounter in Belfont, Center County, knows somebody, whether it was their family member, their neighbor, their, you know, cousin, worked here. So to see them come in, and not being a local person, to come in and hear the stories and how much Titan Energy or Zero Metal or whatever it was called during whichever decade, um, meant so much to the community. And then to have it just shut down. Like when we were up in the different locker rooms, uh, cleaning them out for different reasons, there were, you know, love letters and there were boots and clothes and it was just a time capsule of when they just shut the doors and closed it down. So we had tons of workers' boots stretched the whole way down the, the, the room and it just amazing how many hours of their lives were spent here. And then to see them come back in the door and give me an education on, oh, this, I used to work in the boiler house and this is what we did with this one or that one. And this is, you know, die cast and you can still see the grass embedded in the floor. I was hired here 4 11 77. Last Monday, at a, if Sierra would still be open, I'd have been here 45 years. In this, and right where I'm sitting right now was one of the last places I sat before they closed the door too. We all was here until they closed the doors. That's that's four. Bob Breeder, 1973 to 2008. I worked about every department here, I think. I started actually started down here in uh, 71, and I worked till 2008. Started in 1969 to 2008. And I started in large rod and went the whole way out to the end of the door. So Angela, you're playing an incredible role in preserving this wonderful history. Why do you think that's so important? Here at Titan Hollow, we're just completely honored to be part of this space and yeah. to help preserve the history and what it means to the community, while making sure it's unique and individual and totally repurposed to a new life. You know, not being able to tear these buildings down, but just find new life in them and, and use it for something completely different. brass, you know, and they use a lot of it in a lot of different ways. To make the kind of brass, give the kind of engineering advice, and provide the prompt service that enables our customers to answer yes to those questions. And here's the way we go about it. Derek, what excites me about this place is the connection it has. This whole area has a connection to the iron history of Center County. This site eventually becomes an iron works. Nittany Iron Works. That's why Harvey Mann made access because it had the right iron. Eventually, when the Sieg family eventually purchases this whole area, they kind of transition it from iron to brass. So iron, brass, and now beer. 
Yeah, right here on this, on this hallowed ground right here. <laughs> right. Hey, Rod. Hey, welcome to X, man. Thanks. Thanks for having us. Good to see you, Rod. Welcome to yeah, X. Yeah. yeah, welcome to X. Man. Appreciate you. Show us around? Sure. Yeah, I'll show All you a little right. bit about the history of this place and uh, how we repurposed a lot of this building to, um, you know, to keep kind of the theme of, of the old facility, the yeah. Zero Bolton and Titan Metal. Is our uh, little greeter stand here that came from in the plant here somewhere nice and we really didn't change it much we just brushed it off yeah. it up a little bit uh it was probably like a little foreman's desk or something mm -hmm. like that i imagine uh, so you helped build this yeah is that your work yep we pulled nice. those out of the locker room the trim shop everybody's favorite part is the honda sticker that's a bit of a famous feature of that yeah, wall that there okay the, the floors we also kept we had them uh ground down several times uh, it almost gives a little bit of a terrazzo look, but we had to grind a lot of the grime off of here yeah. from, you know, uh, several, many decades of, of, of being a steel and metal plant. Right. <clears throat> when the business started, it was Alpha Manufacturing, and it was actually down at McCoy's Dam in Belfort. That only lasted about two years, I think, 1915 to 1917. And they moved up to this current location. And their primary product was large diameter brass and bronze uh, rods, which would be melded, cast, screwed. Plumbing, electronics, valves, fittings. Some of the most popular products that the average person would know is if you go to Lowe's and you want to buy a plumbing fitting, uh, whether it's a compression fitting or not, our customers would either use our rod and do it, or we made those for them in the automatic screw machine product. If the forging industry, we would make forgings. Most of that went to the valve and fitting industry. And that went into refrigeration, uh, heating, air conditioning, uh, compressed gas. And some of the people would really recognize if you have a barbecue grill, the valve on top of 20 pound cylinder we made those by the hundreds of thousands and we either machined them to the customer specs or we sold them the raw forging and they machined them to their specs. When I first came to work here, I ran a forge press. And after, I think it was whatever the probationary time was, I, because it's a union shop, I bid out of that into die cast and the difference between the processes with the forge press you take a slug or a piece off a piece of rod and heat it up and and put it in a die and forge it. With die cast, we had molten metal where we'd have closed dies and then you would scoop out the metal and pour it into the top and it would go all through the section of the dies. Then you'd open it up and then take a piece, one piece out, or two pieces or whatever. Former employees come in here uh, we usually ask them to sign the book, just kind of say when they worked here or what they did. One of the former employees uh, here informed us one day that this was a vat of um, acid, an acid dipped, uh, a place for acid dipping. And as it splashed out, it was corroding the concrete. So they put a, a resistant brick around the perimeter of that vat. Yeah. Crane rails, mm -hmm. they would move a lot of product up and down uh, assembly lines or the process with the, the crane rails. There's still a few here that we'll be able to see, but this is one right here. Had an architect help us kind of pull some of that vision together. Mm -hmm. uh, local architect here, Hoffman Leakey Architects. Okay. And they did a great job and really we gave them a two word vision, which was Industrial Oktoberfest. I think you nailed it. Unbelievable how many different machines were here and how much knowledge was here. You know, and the, especially in the toll and die makers and machinists, they, they were unbelievable the work they did here. And there was so much different machinery, you know, to work on. I mean, it was it was pretty fascinating. And I think that uh, the legacy here is to see, for us who spent all these years here, is to see that the building is being used for something that's necessary and something that uh, it, 
can utilize the facility. And so every time we walk in here, we have a memory. About a month ago, we were doing the interviews with the former Ciro employees. And uh, at the end of the interviews, the guy came up to me and he said, hey, check this out. This is, this is my old locker, locker number 16 for about mm. 10 years. And so we, we, we sat and chatted by his old locker. And that, that's, really, that's really what touched me. I mean, just to connect that whole project with, and meet, meet a guy who used the locker you know, throughout his career. And it's pretty incredible. We have a new Pilsner coming out. Um, the Pilatus has been uh, revamped here in the Pilsner. Yeah. yeah, I'll try that. Yeah. And it's fresh out of the yeah, uh, bright tank. So. Rod, you're a big part of keeping this chapter of history alive, you know, in a new and creative way. How do you feel about that? Uh, we're very happy to be be a part of it. And like I said, this was, you know, a kind of by chance that we were introduced to this facility. And uh, I'm so glad we were. Uh, you know, once we saw that vision, um, it was great that we could you know, incorporate so much of the existing facility and the history of the facility. We felt that this had such local history here. We wanted to keep the name. Uh, some, some older fellows have come in, you know, with their daughters or sons, grandchildren, and, you know, we've been able to give them tours and they'd pointed out you know, what used to be there. And this didn't, you know, they're like, this didn't look like this, you know, when I worked here. Well, we hope to grow our um, production side of things and the distribution. Uh, we're in, the, majority of Pennsylvania right now we'd like to make sure we're covered in, everywhere in PA and then uh, hit a little bit more of the, the mid-Atlantic area. Um, hopefully we'll be looking at a uh, maybe a satellite location or two that's still um, nothing that's uh, definite but we are looking at those those possibilities and hope to get out to certain festivals we've been doing some beer festivals some local festivals um, uh, in the last two years, and we hope to continue to, to do some of that to you know, still be a part of the community here. It fits, fits right into yeah. the story, the industrial history of the county. It went from iron and transitioned to brass, really. I mean, this was an old iron works at one, at one point, the Nittany Iron Works. Yeah, you have that axe history, that iron history, and then eventually that brass and alloy and metals and helped her uh, just really celebrating that, which is really cool. And, and, uh, and running with it, so. And it's a cool name, so it's, you it's, can't yeah. go wrong with that. Axman sounds like a cool name for a brewery. <laughs>